Yo, 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 what's going on? Uh, I'm taking a break real quick. And I'll tell y'all this. You know, I had posted up to Lil Rocco breeding. I don't know what the bitch's name was or whatever. And uh, <clears throat> I guess it struck a couple nerves. But I tell y'all, this is why you motherfuckers don't know shit. First of all, if you're going to do what you consider to be a real breeding, don't bring some broke dick ass dog. And I mean broke dick when I talk about Rocco. Rocco ain't produced nothing. He ain't never produced nothing. Y'all can keep on making up excuses. He high rear. He screwed up. The man then posted where the dog is producing dogs that's blind and all kind of bullshit and have all other kind of issues. The dog got a kink tail. Then we got an ingenious breeding. And then why I say this is an ingenious breeding that y'all want to argue with me about so damn much it's an ingenious breeding that you breed a dog with no tail and a kink to a dog who got a kink tail. The fuck you think you're going to end up with? It ain't a chance in hell for no good tails in that breeding. You know, so now, basically, the genetics that we put together is one dog look like a bulldog. Well, both of them look like bulldogs. I didn't see the bitch's eyes. But now we got, a, we got, a, we got one dog that's got some circular ass eyes, bad temperament. He throws bullshit dogs. We got a high rear. We got... Um, a little bit of cow hog action going on there. We got a bad tail, then we breed her to we breed him to a bitch that the bitch got a long ass back and ain't got no tail, and she looked like a bulldog. And you want to tell me this is fire? This is exactly the reason that the American bully game ain't shit and ain't gonna be shit. Cause you motherfuckers make the rules up as y'all go. I'm just gonna be real with you. I, I'm through pulling punches with you people every two damn seconds. Y'all don't know shit about dogs. Y'all come in with hype and it's fire and it's advertisement. Yeah, people sell bullshit every day. People sell bullshit every day. Every motherfucker. People sell bullshit every day. Just because you sell it don't mean that it's good. There ain't neither one of them dogs worth a damn shit. And this is why the American bully game is so screwed up right now. People constantly do dumbass breedings and, oh, that dog is fire. That dog is this. That dog is that. Let me tell you, simple, simple-minded simple motherfuckers, one thing. If you got you a dog that got long-ass back, high rear, this is the kind I'm just telling y'all the bad shit in this breeding. I know the dogs is bully. I ain't dumb. I've been around too damn long. Then champed out too many dogs. Then made too many good dogs. I ain't stupid. But I tell you like this, in this one breeding, I see fucked up feet. I see bulldog-like features, which are not American bully-type features. I see high rear. I see bad top line. I see double on the bad tails. The circular eyes. We know at least one of those dogs has horrible temperament and, and likes to be drug around the ring. We see cow hawked. We see all of this action going on in one pedigree of these puppies to be coming. And you want to tell... No, ho, 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 ho. Ho, let me stop. The medical proof that Rocco throws blind-ass dogs and fucked-up dogs. And he's been throwing a ton of cleft palates. So with all these traits being involved in a dog... And I'm talking about science. This is science. The man went and had tests done... And the dog is throwing blind dogs and, 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 and all these other flaws that that man listed, which is too long. The dog got a kink tail. The dog got all these issues. Y'all get mad at me because y'all get caught in y'all feelings because y'all want to defend something. I'm just giving you facts. I'm just, what's going on, MJ? I'm just giving you facts. I'm giving you facts as I see it. Somebody debate me if you want to debate me. Rocco has a high rear. He has a kink tail. He got a bad top line. His movement is not great. It can't be great with those attributes. He's got an American bully, uh, bulldog head. The bitch looks like a damn uh, stretched out English bulldog with a cropped ears. Beautiful chest, though. I say chest and muscularity is a thing. That's what we're going for. You know the Browns going to do what they do this weekend, Brandon. How dare you? But at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, y'all tell me, how does this make sense in going further in breedings? How does it make sense? You gonna add all these bad traits to a breeding, and you talking about that this is the next generation, and you making something that's fire. You making more trash dogs. Not only do you make more trash dogs, but the genes are compounded. You right, Baker's feeling dangerous. I'm feeling dangerous too, Woody Mike. 
<laughs> What's going on, brother? Blessings to you and your family, man. Yeah, Baker is a bad boy. I'm, uh, hey, I'm not, hey, trust me, this is the happiest I've ever been as a Browns fan since Bernie. But you can do the style of dog that you want to do. People think I hate extreme dogs. I've seen some beautiful extreme dogs. I've seen some beautiful extreme dogs. I've seen guys who's actually done exotics the wrong way. I mean, excuse me, the right way. I'm sorry. I wasn't even trying to be funny. What's going on, Watson? Heather, I love you, lady. You know, uh, hey, Griff, I'm... I mean, I, I'm I'm living in I'm living in Florida. Well, I got a house in Texas too, but I'm going to Cleveland. I, I got to see this man. I just lived a whole lifetime of frustration with these Browns. That dude is something else. The placement on the ball, shh. hey, that sooner life, <laughs> man. He he placing that ball something else, man. That's all I look for is a QB. He sort of remind me of how Breeze and Rogers can put the ball in tight windows. And, and it be on time and the receivers don't have to wait. You know how it is, that DB life. Them DBs is waiting for you to have to wait a half a second for they can jump that route. And he ain't giving it to them. I'm, I'm a happy Browns fan. We ain't going to make the playoffs, but uh, shit, I'm happy. We, we we won more games in the last five weeks than we won in two years. <laughs> but, you know, with these dogs, I tell y'all, man, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. You can love... Uh, extreme big I love a big ass dog I want a big ass dog you know what I mean uh recently I've been blessed to get a double XL coming here you know in in two weeks you know big you know expected to be a 180 pound dog and all that stuff and you know I I love dogs but the one thing I will never accept is a screwed up dog in my yard it's plenty of guys that I know that's breeding extreme dogs very big dogs you know <laughs> that's all good Mike I love it you talk browns I'm with it bro but, you know, at the end of the day, what we do is we're here to improve our breeds. I don't care if you with exotics. I don't care if you with the American Bully, Sheldon, Luke. You know, I don't care what you with. Leave this shit better than what you came in with this shit, man. That's all I'm asking y'all. Everybody think I bitch and complain about everything. No, make good dogs. If you're going to make an exotic, make a bad motherfucking exotic that can walk and that can move and ain't got his tongue hanging out and ain't got his eyeballs staring off into space and he can't move. That's bullshit. If you're going to make an exotic, make something that's worth something, man. I had to get, inbox you, Heather. <laughs> but, you know, if you... If you're going to make something, make something that's worth something, man. I don't care what you're making from exotic all the way up to XL, double XL. Make some real shit. Y'all coming around here with this weak-ass shit and y'all expected to get patted on the back. I'm not biting my tongue no more. I re Shout out to all the exotic breeders who got a dog that's worth a dime. A dog that can run around the yard and move and not fall out and not be dead with a nice little top line. Shout out to my boy Danny Guerrero up there in uh, Rhode Island, Hall of Fame Rhode Island. Shout out to all the pocket breeders who can pre breed a dog without their feet turning backwards with high rears and they can move and they can breathe. Shout out to all of the guys. James Lewis, shout out to you. And James Lewis don't even, that's my cat, but he don't even breed the style of dog that I personally like. But he'll tell you when he got something that I like, I jump right on James. That's it. It's not about hate. It's about pushing the bar to make better quality dogs. Everybody is not equipped to be a breeder. Everybody ain't up for this task. I'm telling y'all that right now. Everybody's not up for the task of being a breeder because a lot of y'all don't take time to think. A lot of you motherfuckers don't have the capacity to think. And then those who do think, you ain't got the testicular fortitude to even think for yourself. You let another motherfucker think for you. You can't go in there and say, that that ain't right for my program. I got to make something better. If somebody else tell you, oh, you got to do that, and that's going to be fire. Now you got all the fuel you need to go and do something that you doubted yourself. I don't care what breed it is. No matter what we here to do, make this shit the best that you can, man. This is not a debate. Breeding dogs with fucked up tails, fucked up rears, and all kind of traits that we know are not going to make this breed better, you, you get no pass from me and you get no love from me. Hey, James, that's what everybody said. I ain't got my man, my damn hat is in the other room. Some people can't believe I got hair. They was like, man, he done went bald years ago. I still got it. It's, 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 just, it's just going gray on me, man. It's, <laughs> I can't stop the gray. But I'll tell you what, man. 2019 and going forward with all of our breeds. I, man, I'm telling you the truth, man. I support everybody. 
Y'all heard me talk about what's going on, Christian. Much love, brother. I, I, I tell you what, man. It's like this. I support every breed, man. I support every breed. I support anybody out here trying to do the right thing. But I can't support bullshit. When you bring these dogs that screwed up, man, if you want some extreme shit, y'all check that guy out that I was just talking about, Mr. Lewis. He got extreme shit, and he'll show you his dogs ain't falling out. They very, very muscular. They very, very, but he's taking a passion and even trying to add other bloods to make his dogs the best that they can be, but they still extreme. That's the science of the game. It don't have to be what I like as long as it's done right. And if it's done right, I'm going to tell you, good job. I ain't never, y'all never seen me talk about a badass dog and be like, oh man, I just, I don't like the dude. So no, whatever we going to do in this game, whether, you know, whether, you know, it's pocket extreme, you know, which extreme is not supposed to exist. You know what I mean? Exactly. James Lewis, that man got good dogs over there. I'm not going to hate on a man who's doing his thing and elevating his game. That's silliness. That discredit anything to come out my mouth. Y'all check out James. If that's your type of dog and you like extreme, James Lewis got some nice shit over there. That little champagne boy had me like, yeah, yeah, I like it. This is what I am. I'm a dog man. I don't have no hate for nobody. It don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? We 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 not in the streets. There's it's, it's no real competition here. But even the double XL guys, uh-oh, somebody done burnt some shit up. Y'all heard it. But, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's all love, man. I'm telling y'all, it's all love. I want healthy dogs to come out here. And I want I don't care what, even if we don't have a class for you, come set up and show people what a healthy, good dog is and, and break the stereotypes that's killing us. Over the last year, I've done nothing. What's going on, Brian? I got to get with you. That's my brother. I got to get with you, man. I'm back. But over the last year, I've talked to, well, I will say over the last three or four months, I've talked to a lot of sponsors. I've talked to a lot of people who are outside of our circle. And their main concern is the way that we do dogs, the way that we portray ourselves. You know, I sat down with a person. I'm not going to name the company of this uh, this dog food company, but I sat down with them. And, and the reason why I'm not going to name it, because it was more of a personal conversation after business. But, you know, but, as you know, he was saying, you know, as far as us elevating our community, he said, man, why don't y'all represent yourselves better? You know, and I'm like, you know, I sort of knew where he's going, but he said, what do you mean? I said, what do you mean, man? He said, how can you sell the stuff that's coming across the screen in y'all community to a suburban household or to a regular family that just wants a pet? He said, to the naked eye and to people who know the smallest thing about dogs, you can start to see possible health issues with a lot of the dogs. How can y'all breed grow behind this? He said, how can you come in here as a, uh, you know, as a representative of certain breeds and ask us to put our name on your breed when it's obvious that a lot of your dogs and a lot of things that's being pushed in your community is unhealthy? I wasn't offended because that's where I feel like this is the reason why I'm here. The reason why I'm here is that those who believe that we can, I don't care how much money you make. If you sell a dog for a hundred and ninety thousand, one point five million, whatever you get, it's all right with me. I ain't got no beef for that. If you hitting them for ten thousand, more power to you. Feed your babies, man. Set up your vacations and your retirement. Feed you whatever you got to do, but sell a motherfucker quality when you put this name on it. You know. Some of y'all might have seen American Gangster, and that's the way I feel about the American Bully. It's like Blue Magic. This is our brand. Those of us who work for this American Bully name still take pride in this American Bully name. If you're going to put the American Bully name or the American Bully community on there, that's our brand. Put quality out. Send your shit out to where people is proud to have an American Bully. And I don't want no damn German Shepherd. I don't want no Collie. I don't want no Feral Hound. No clumber spaniel. I don't want, I want an American bully. Make something that make this community proud. It ain't nothing about me and what I'm gonna sell. I ain't gonna sell that many dogs. I don't have a problem selling dogs, honestly. But I don't even care to sell that many dogs. The only thing that I care about is that the people who care about this community have a voice and good dogs start to be sold. 
good dogs start to be bred. Good dogs start to get into the community. And when people finally recognize the American bully as a real breed around the world and homes around the world, that is represented as a positive thing and not some train wreck ass dogs that we should be embarrassed of. A lot of people didn't work for this shit, y'all. I'm just telling you the real. A lot of people didn't pour a lot of things into the American bully name. And the way it's being represented right now around the world is disgraceful, man. It's not about me. It's not about the TBKC. Much love to Kev Green, Cam Wembley, you know, even Dave Wilson. Step Everybody step their fucking game up and make this breed better. It's about respect. A lot of y'all got a lot of money in this. A lot of y'all got a lot of time and energy into this. Let's make something better that we can, we can track down them German Shepherds and them Rottweilers and all the other dogs that's chilling on people's couches right now in, in homes all across America and across the world. We can't do that if we're making a subpar product. I'm telling you that right now. We cannot do it. Y'all believe that the American bully is bigger than what it is. Trust and believe 99% of people who know about dogs in this world don't know what the fucking American bully is. It ain't even on most lists. It's just now making airplane lists and all that good stuff. People don't know what this dog is. What's going on wrong? My man Ramos, what's going on? They are killing the bully, but we're going to bring this shit back. And we're going to bring it back by stepping the bar up. I hope I put enough pressure on every son of a bitch in this game to step the bar up. Y'all see, I will give props and credit to anybody, but I don't care what you're doing. If, like I said, before I jump off here and go drink some more of this wine. <laughs> Whether it's the American bully, the exotic, the XL, the double XL, which in my opinion are American bullies too. No matter what you are doing, man. Do this shit to the highest level, man. You know, and James, that's something we're going to have to clear. Education, this knowledge. I can't wait to interview you, brother, because this is what people need to get different perspectives in this game. I'm just being real. You know what I'm saying? People need to get different perspectives. They need to think about the weight pulling and different things like that and where these dogs come from. And not only do they know, need to know where these dogs come from, because I think that's be a thing we always argue is you still got people arguing if the dogs is mixed with something else. Y'all need to stop that shit. But the most important thing is where we going, you know? I need to sit down with a James Lewis. I need to sit down, you know what I'm saying, with some of the bigger uh, XL people. I need to sit down with Marco Suarez. And people need to hear... You know what I mean? Oh, it's a ton of Denzel offspring out there. <laughs> uh, he's doing a breeding pretty soon, man. Uh, you know, inbox me if you was uh, thinking about puppy over Denzel. But I want to sit down, and this is what I'm doing this year. I'm traveling a lot. I'm doing interviews with the Carlton Pratts and the Oscar Gomez. I'm going to see James Lewis. I'm going to see a little bit of everybody because you know why? Education. Is, is the main thing that we need to make our community better, man. When you start to see a guy's yard, and I don't care what the dog is or what the breed is, he can bring out quality and he can explain to you why he's breeding this dog and which direction he's going in. Y'all don't know how many people who are just stepping into this game and that little bit of knowledge. If you're a knowledgeable breeder who really pushing the health and confirmation of these breeds, don't be afraid to open up your mouth, man. Don't, don't be afraid to open up your mouth, man. Oh, man, Eddie Eddie out there, Blue Line, that's my cat, man. Me and Eddie go back damn near 20 years now. Don't think I ain't stopping by. When I'm in Cali, I'm hitting everybody's yards. I got so many friends in Cali, it's ridiculous. I'm a, Literally, when I go to do my interviews in Cali, the camera should be here in about two weeks. But when I go to do my interviews in Cali, I'm going to be out in Cali for about two weeks. I'm at everybody's. I'm going to see Robert Lee kicking the door in. I want me I want me one of them uh, shirts with all the little dogs over it. I'm going to get me one. I don't know if they make them in big boy sizes, three X's, but I'm going to get me one. I'm losing weight. But uh, all of them, you know, Eddie, Blue Line. I mean, it's OGs out there. Oscar, me and Oscar is pretty tight, you know, so that's an easy interview. But, uh, oh, yeah, James, you're right. You know, uh, uh, going to the yard, that's a dog show. Let me let me pull out at least five or six to make the people, ooh, ooh. That's the, but you remember, back in the day, that's the way it used to be. You know what I mean? That's the way it used to be. No, Rome, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that double XLs, I think double XLs is closer to a bully than the exotics. I think the exotics is a life of its own that need to be 
wrapped up under control. You know what I mean? I think the exotic became a playground for people to do whatever they wanted to do, and it sort of got out of control. Not being ins not being insulting, but that's what it was. When they put that term exotic, it never really had a real standard for people to follow. I think the double XL is so close to the um to the XL that it's something that could be reeled into the bully family because just being honest, from start to finish, the double XL is a lot like the American bully. The double XL really originates from a lot of Camelot dogs, which Camelot dogs used to be a part of the American bully community. What happened is, as their community grew, their dogs got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, th my, my main objective is that no matter what people are doing, let's reel it in. Let's, let's get a direction. What we've been doing for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years now is we've just been breeding. We don't have a true direction. How can you know where you're going if you don't have a direction, man? We got 30 different styles of bullies. We got everybody who's a guru. If we get to get into that motherfucking bin, we got a total mass just craziness going on. What's going on, Danny Baker? You know, and I tell you what, <laughs> I tell you what, it, it, it's, it's madness. Every breed that we are partaking in, I want direction. You know, I'm bringing in people like this has been something else, you know, but I don't, I want to make it a platform, you know, I want to make <laughs> that damn James, please don't get him going, man. But I want to make this a platform for people to really say what their vision is. Cause that's another thing that we do. We put out dogs, but we don't say what our vision is. You know, it, no matter who you are as a breeder, I think you should be able to step out there and say, I want my dogs to be, you know, 17 inches, 110 pounds, 26, 27 inch head, you know what I mean? Strong rear, big shoulders, tight paws, you know, beautiful top line, elegant movement. I want that. So when I say this on video, when you come to my yard, like James Lewis was saying, this is the dog show. I'm giving you what I said I'm giving you or I'm not a good breeder. Not it's going to be fire. It's going to be fire. Some bullshit. You talking about that's bullshit. I don't want to hear fire. David Perez, much love, brother. You know, me and that guy collabing on some things and finally getting it together. But what we aiming for is to take this game back to where you held accountable. See, the way breeding used to be is that you was held accountable because we knew what we was expecting. You was judged by a certain standard. Now everything has gotten so loose that you can just breed anything and look past anything. No, we back in the age to where your dog has to be put together like a machine. Hen Wilson, what's going on, baby? This this is about making machines again. This is about, you know, this is this is about uh hey, much love, brother. Hopefully we in business here soon, man. Them girls is looking good over here. Looking like hogs, man. <laughs> Danny feed them too much, man. <laughs> but uh, you know, we you know, we got to get back to that point to where it's a fit and and that makes it fair. When we know our direction, you know what I mean? We got to we got to we got to be on it, man. Hey, you know, I'm a 2X, Mr. Watson. I, I done lost weight. I'm down from the 3X. <laughs> but I tell you, we, ha we have to get that direction. Once we know where the playing field is at, it's over with. Once we know exactly what our dogs are supposed to be, it's playing field. You know, I mean, well, Brian, it goes back to, uh, what's that dog's name, man? Whopper. Everybody knew that Whopper was a, uh, was a Mastiff. That's why I laugh when everybody talk about, ah, oh, man, oh, you and me neither, Dave. We about to be smiling like a mother of them. But uh, <laughs> if you got Whopper in your pedigree, that's a Mastiff, man. That's a Mastiff. This is why I say the lies in our community have to stop. People act like they just, oh, we were just so much virgin. When I say that I've never intentionally, and you notice I use that word intentionally a lot, I can't tell you what's in all of my dogs. I've gotten dogs from other people and stuff like that, but I've never intentionally bred to deceive anybody. I can honestly say that. But if you ask me about Denzel, he got Monster G in it. Monster G is very suspect. If you want to talk about the main dogs in my line, there's some suspect dogs behind these dogs. Corrupt was very... I know Corrupt had an American Bulldog in him. You know? Hey, James, Whopper dogs was huge because they was fucking Mastiffs. Everybody knew that Whopper's dogs was Mastiffs. It's Whopper blood all through. Some of y'all don't know who Whopper is because y'all ain't looked back about 15 generations in y'all pedigree. That's a Mastiff, man. 
That's a motherfucking Mastiff, man. We knew it way back when. It wasn't even his owner admitted that he was part Mastiff, you know? You know, ge genetics play the hugest part. You know, this genetics and decision making plays the hugest part in what you're going to get going into the future. But we have to be smart, man. Going through all this, we have to be smart. And I think now our community has to be open. Let's stop the bullshit arguments about what's in the dogs. And I know this. Everybody back in the day, I'm not saying everybody in the big sense, but a lot of people was cheating. A lot of people was adding dogs in. You got to think, it's thousands and thousands of people, man. Shit, they could pull a house. It was massive. They could pull a house. I saw a Camelot dog pulls the whole house, literally. They had so many bricks and shit on there. They had people start piling up on there. Them big-ass red dogs was pulling everything in the spot. I was in Pomona then. That's when um Larry Durant had that show. Larry Durant had that show, and that was the craziest show ever, man. Larry Durant had that show, and you had King Lion. You had Monster J. You had, that was Paco's first show. You had Nemesis. Little Roe, Blue Gangster, 21 Black. I mean, damn. It was an all-star in, in that spot. And shit, you even had Caesar Milan in the West Coast. Uh, uh, the West Coast, uh, what was they called? The dudes that used to do the uh, Pimp My Ride shit. They was in the house, man. That was a hell of a show. But I seen at, at that, man, I seen one of them damn red dogs pull everything. They ain't even had nothing else. They had to start getting, they said, get the biggest guys in the house and let's pile them up on top of it. And them motherfuckers still was pulling them. They ain't have enough weight for them. You know, those are good old days, but I tell you the best part about it is, is that it was a lot more truthfulness back then than it is now. But now we don't even have to worry about what's in our dogs. We have to accept that it's possibly 10 different breeds in our dogs. I'm, be, I'm not being insulting. I'm being real. You know, I, I, I've got strong knowledge that even Boston Terrier has been used throughout some of the bullies. You know, French Bulldog, English Bulldog, American Bulldog, Odie Bulldog, Alapaha Bulldog, Pitbull, you know, uh, Staffy. You know, I mean, it, it's a lot of shit that people didn't use into our dogs. And we all, you know, have bought and traded different dogs. And, you know, yeah, West Coast Customs, that was their name. That was their name, Harold. You know, yeah, them, them dudes was there. The real big black buff dude was there. It was, that was a hell of a show. You know, it was some uh it was some actress, a white lady, real popular. I I forget at this time. But uh that show, Larry Durant used to throw the best shows for sure. That was a hell of a show. But you know, um, you know, it's a lot of breeds mixed into this dog and we need to stop fighting that battle right now. What we need to do is say how we gonna fix it and how we gonna move forward to make ourselves respectable. The only way that we can ever become respectable breeds is if we get proper direction, y'all. Direction is going to be everything, man. Direction with this breed is going to be everything. And if we can't stick to a direction, we're never going to be considered a real breed. We can't have different dogs as the most popular dog every year. I mean, not different dogs, but different looks. Yeah, 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 yeah. James Lewis just made a good point. You have to breed to your eyes and, and not the pedigree because the pedigrees lie. You can see what's in front of you. You can see the trace that's coming out. And as we breed with our eyes, we're going to breed to what we know is supposed to be happening. The pedigrees lie, man. You know, it's no way around it. The pedigrees lie. When you got thousands of people trying to come up, you don't know what the hell they do. They could be mixing damn Marmaduke back there. Hey, Felina, hope you're feeling better, lady. You know, I'm a, as a matter of fact, I'm going to be out your way pretty soon. I'll hit you up. But I tell you, you know, Breathe with your eyes. Breathe with your, your true heart, not your money heart. Breathe with your true heart, man. Make something special. It's a lot of cats who I see doing some special things, and I'm hoping, for real, for real, that we can... Uh, I'm hoping that we can make this jump, man. It don't got to be me. You know, I'm a competitor. I like to compete with y'all, but if y'all making better dogs than me, more power to you. I, I'm not in, you know... I'm here for the breed, man. Whoever can raise these breeds up to the nicest level, man. I love it, man. You, you, yeah, you're right, bird. The traits don't lie, man. The traits don't lie. The traits don't lie. I want, I want us to see us going back to a solid standard to where this thing is an even playing field for everybody and we grind out, man, and we make some beautiful shit. You know, everybody in their own place, in their own category, and we just get it back to where it's supposed to be. But, you know... Um, it's going to be a fun year. It's going to be a good year, and it's going to be a lot of education. And, you know, I mean, we're going to see it in our own ring. The Dobermans is coming. The Roddies is coming. I already know what show they coming to. The first show they coming to pretty heavy, you know. 
we got to beat them motherfuckers, man. <laughs> we got to beat them. I'm telling you, them Dobermans, them Roddies, them, uh, them, uh, damn, uh, uh, Bordeaux's, you know, the Pressers come. We got some good dogs coming in there, man. Team XL, much love, Ron. You better come and represent, damn it. But we got to knock them off, man. And I like this type of comp competition because, you know, Doberman people is coming with a different type of attitude. Like, how dare you even think you can beat me? And I love it because that give us a bar to set. That give us a confirmational bar to set that our dogs is like, you know what? I'm going to beat that motherfucker Doberman. This is what it's all about. It's real, true competition, not any kind of, uh, not any kind of extra, you know, uh, hype or none of that. This is about putting dogs in there that's confirmationally strong and sound, and let's see who does it. The Hermes Bulldogs have a lot of dogs coming this year. The Hermes Bulldogs have a lot of dogs coming. We have to figure out how to judge them properly. But some of them dogs are already put together to a point that they can compete at a high level. You know, Brian, don't kill them. Don't let them, don't let too many of them Mandela secrets out. They already want to kill me. But what I'm telling y'all, man, is we're here to have a good time. You know, let's get back to being about dogs. I know it's a lot of good dog men and women out there. Let's be about dogs, man. Let's make this fair competition. Let's have fun. Let's represent our breed. We don't have to talk stupid and, and lie about shit. If your dog got a kink tail, fucked up rear, fucked up paws, bad mouth, whatever. You ain't really in the race, baby. You ain't in the race. It's that simple. If your dog got all these flaws, you can see them with your eye. You ain't even in the race. You an afterthought. We look, we off to do something else, you know? Oh, we coming to the Midwest. Uh, Bobo Starsky, my man Drew. They they got that going. I got, I'm got. i going to have two to three shows in Ohio this year. Probably more. But right now, it's only two to three in the Canton, Ohio area. Uh, we're going to be in Indiana. We know we're going to be in Chicago. Um, actually, we got something lined up. For Tennessee also, and uh, we're going to work on Kentucky, but we plan on being everywhere. We're going to be very active. We got a lot of good, you know, uh, guys who are just here to basically put money into shows and make them happen. You know, some strong sponsors who are businessmen waiting to see what kind of business this can be. And I don't have no problem with uh, businessmen jumping into the show, the show thing to blow those crowds up and make it better for everybody. Ain't no telling what y'all gonna see at a TBKC show. You might see a spider monkey. You might see, uh, you know, some big ass koi fish. You might see, you know, snakes. You might see whatever. But we bringing animal people into the house to introduce our breed to the world. People who never heard of all of our dogs, they gonna they gonna hear about it. Michigan, of course, John is there. Atlanta bird. That's one of the cities that I need to work on. I really need to work on. I'm pretty solid everywhere else. I got people actively getting stuff done. Some already had their stuff done. Uh, Atlanta, weird as shit, but that's one of the areas that I got to get it together. Oh, Jabari, we got to get together, man. I'm sorry I've been like all over the place, but we got to, we'll make that happen, man. I'm excited though, y'all. I'm excited to get out there with a lot of good dog people. Y'all don't forget too, you don't have to go crazy and just have a big ass show. I, I want, John wants, you know, we all want a lot of barbecues, you know. The weather is going to be getting hot. <laughs> Here he go with this Browns fan shit. But the, we doing good, James. Hey, I ain't I ain't got nothing to say. We doing good. But uh barbecues is the easiest, man. One show bringing sp speakers like your vet or maybe professional handlers or stuff like that for the second part of it. But we throw one big ass show and we have a good time. But barbecues less cost. Still get the same amount of time in there that day. We just get more education, more kick it time. You might even get a chance to get a guy in there like Sean Gilmore from True Tank or whatever. Bring him up as a speaker. Do a QA and a with people just to ask about breeding tips and how the edge blood works this way or that way. I think the barbecue is, is, is the best thing. BJ, let's set up Minnesota, man. I had a guy out there and he fell off, but let's set it up. The barbecue scene is where it's at. It's a little cheaper, but we're going to still throw the show. I won't even say cheaper, but I liked it. That's where the American Bully was started with the barbecues. But, man, I know it's uh, Friday night. I lose track of my days. I was about to say Saturday. You know, God bless all y'all. Y'all do y'all thing and enjoy yourself. I'm going to go watch, uh, what's that, Equalizer 2 and see how that go, man. But, um, uh, we gonna make it happen. Manny, hit me in my inbox, man. I lost all my numbers, contacts, everything. So anybody who need to hit me, hit me in my inbox. I'm doing bad. I'm like Pookie on New Jack as far as information go. 
But hey, God bless y'all, man. It's a hard time of the year. Call your loved ones and just, you know, somebody you ain't talked to in a long time and tell them you love them because this is a very depressing time, just like it can be a joyous time of the year. But much love. God bless all y'all. Peace.